Here we want to continue our pairwise combinations of atomic orbitals to produce molecular orbitals using the LCAO method. In this webcast, we're going to identify the disallowed combinations. When we have uh, orbitals that are disallowed, they are orbitals that produce no net orbital overlap. There's no interaction. And in other words, we can ignore all of these combinations. They're not fruitful for the production of molecular orbitals. And again, we'll be looking for things like 2s combinations side on to a p orbital, or we'll be looking at orthogonal p orbitals. That's what we're looking for on the sheet one, one and what we're going to find is that many of these combinations will rule themselves out as disallowed combinations. A simple one to spot would be this combination here, which is the combination of 2s on atom 1 and 2pz on atom 2. When we rotate about the z-axis so that the x-axes come together with their positive directions facing one another, there's no change in the structure or the appearance of that 2pz orbital. And what we end up with is uh, a side-on view, uh, a side-on combination of that 2s orbital. And there are destructive as well as constructive regions of overlap. They're equal and they're opposite, and so they cancel one another. No net overlap. The combination is disallowed. And if you look through this, what you're going to find is that many of these, starting from here, are that exact same situation. So down to there, those are 2s combinations with side on 2py or 2pz. If we just keep going, everything also to the right of this is going to be bringing the 2px along its axis of symmetry, but uh, we're combining that with an orthogonal uh, 2py, so that's a disallowed combination as well. If we continue, we have the case of either orthogonal orbitals or orbitals that have side on 2px with the 2s. Everything that's highlighted or enclosed in that red perimeter is a disallowed combination. There's two ways to identify disallowed combinations. And I think the most straightforward, the most intuitive way, is this idea that there is equal and opposite constructive and destructive orbital overlap. However, there's a more formal way that I'll just briefly introduce to you here. And then I'll tell you that I really won't hold you accountable for this. But if you go on and take inorganic chemistry or physical chemistry, this will become the basis of how you'll make choices about what's allowed and what's disallowed. And it has to do with the symmetry of the orbital. And so, uh, again, I won't hold you accountable for this. The picture that's shown here or the symmetry idea are two ways to express the same thing, that is, looking for the disallowed combinations.